All that's really left for us to do at this point is to clean this animation up so it actually looks like a portfolio slideshow. As you can see, we've created all of these animations stacked on top of one another. But that's actually a reasonably good technique for building animations like this, since we're doing the same thing over and over again. As we've seen before, we can always go and move these elements on the timeline. So let's set that up. I'm just going to separate each one of these photos out by layer and move them so that they're sequential instead of stacked right on top of each other. Let me scroll down a little bit and we'll reveal the two that we had hidden from before. I'll just click those red X's. And what we really want to do is just select an entire span all the way to the end and then move it down the timeline. For the first one, that's going to be kind of easy because we can select a layer just by clicking on the layer name. You can see that that's selected all the way out to the end. And while I have these three spans selected, I can just grab them and move them down the timeline. Now, be careful not to move them into another layer. That'll mess everything all up. I'll just keep pushing down here until my second photo starts right where the first photo ends. Now, that's not too bad, but you can see it's going to start getting worse as we start moving things down. So I was going to just go through a couple of techniques that you can use to maximize your screen space and use whenever you're dealing with large amounts of elements that you have to move around in the timeline. First of all, we can resize our panels. I can grab the panel and move it over, but I can also collapse the panel on the other side. Do you see the little arrow up here in the top left corner? If I click that, it'll collapse both of these panels down into tool palettes just like we have on the other side. And that gives me a little bit more room in my timeline area. A second thing we can do to see a little bit more of our timeline is up in the timeline panel options. Now remember our options are up in the top right hand corner of each one of those panels. And if I pull down on timeline options, we've got a set of options up at the top that allow me to change the size of the frames that we're looking at. Now we can go up to large ones or we can go to tiny ones. If I click on tiny, you'll see that all of my frames get very narrow. I can see much more of my timeline now. Now there's another option in here called short that allows you to shorten up the height if you want to see multiple layers. We don't really need that one for right now. This is actually going to be good for us because now we can see a lot more of what's going on on our timeline. Now I can still click on a layer name in order to select all the contents of that layer. So we'll be relying on that just to grab the elements that we need to move. I'll click on reflection here and you notice I'm not worried too much about frames as long as I can put this down here and have it start right where the last photo ends. You can see this makes it much easier for us to move things around. I'll do the same thing for tulip here. While I still have it selected I can just keep pushing it on down the line. Now you notice it is creating that empty span in the beginning and we can see how it's actually beneficial that the end of the span kind of connects itself to the beginning of the span we're moving. That way we don't have to maintain that at all. I've just got two more here. So we'll grab those and move them down. Now I'll actually have to move my timeline down so I can see the end. And let's grab the vine wall. I think I actually have another photo. Yep, there's one up there, so we'll make sure we get that one too. I'll just go ahead and push it down to the end of the timeline. Now I'm scrolling my timeline, but if you just push it to the end and you hold your mouse right, you should be able to get the timeline to scroll by itself. Let me try it with this one. If I get down to the edge here, I can just push on to the end and it'll scroll the timeline all the way down until I can position it exactly. Now I don't want to leave my frames like this because when we're doing meticulous work that requires me to know which frame I'm selecting, it's going to be really hard. So I'm just going to go back to my options panel and I'm going to set it back to normal. And I'll even reset my tools by clicking on this arrow which will expand those panels back out to the way we had them originally. And now we've got our portfolio all set up. Now let's just take a look at our slideshow to make sure it's all looking okay. I'm just going to use the normal play options right here. I'll first rewind my playhead all the way to the beginning, and then I can just hit play here or choose the enter key. We can see that each one of my pictures flows in one at a time. They zoom out and they're looking pretty slick. 
Now, as I said in a final slideshow, you may want to have them hang on the screen for a little bit longer. But this is pretty good for a preview since we're just testing these things out. There was my last picture, and it looks pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and test our movie again. Remember what we had set up back on the main timeline. We have a portfolio layer with this movie clip dropped right in it, but we only have 100 frames of our movie. Now, I can see right in my timeline now that I've got almost 450 frames, so we should actually expect our movie clip to cut off and not play the entire portfolio. Let's see how that runs. I'm going to hit Command Return, and that's Control Enter on the PC. We get a new Swift file, and we can see our animation play incomplete from the beginning. There's our first photo, our second one, and before it even has a chance to go off the screen, you can see that my movie's looping. Now, I'm going to close that test movie down right now, and we'll go back to scene one. Now, we could extend our movie out, but we're going to be finding out some better ways to do this through the use of action script in our next chapter. Everything we've been going over in this series for Flash CS4 is using the brand new motion tween that's new this version. Now, we actually have time to go into it in more detail in our next total training series for Flash CS4, as well as taking a look at a couple of the other brand new animation features, like 3D tweens and inverse kinematics. So if you're interested in learning more about animation, be sure to come back for those. I also wanted to mention that our program is still capable of doing what we would call an old-style tween. If I go up to the Insert menu, you'll notice that in addition to Motion Tween, we also have Classic Tween. And this basically represents the way that we used to animate in previous versions of Flash. If you'd like to find out more about that technique, I've got an entire disk that covers it for Flash CS3 Professional called Flash Animation. So be sure to go to Total Training and take a look for that one.